<laughs> so I'm here to talk about syntax warnings. So does this code look weird to anybody? Yeah, it's kind of, it's pretty gross. It's kind of scattered all over the place. Does it compile? Anybody got any guesses? Yeah, I mean, it's technically correct. You're not wrong. Um, what about this? Does this look better? Yes? Is it the same code? Is it, yeah. the, is it the same behavior? What's different? You had syntax syntax. Nope, it's the same, but you can't tell. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it's almost like this stuff matters. <laughs> so, as you can tell, formatting and this sort of kind of aesthetic stuff does clearly affect your ability to read code, but should this be enforced by the compiler? Like, should I get a syntax error if I don't write require like this? That's, that's, that's fraught with peril. Because, uh, because imagine if a macro produced this and you, you don't want to track any of that, and like, you don't want to have to, like, if you have a hot fix for something that's crashing the site and you need to get that out, oh, great, the cord's going again. Or if I wanted to have to, create my code to fix this cord very, very precisely and spend 10 hours debugging that. Um, but like, this kind of stylistic stuff varies a lot more between person to person as well. There isn't, it's not harder to make a strict definition of what is the proper way to do things. At best, we get suggestions and humans conversing about it and things like code reviews. So, compile errors are a very binary notion. It's either it passes or it doesn't. Either you can type check or you can't, either the test suite works or it doesn't. But when humans analyze code, we do it on kind of a continuum. I mean, sure, you reject all of the stuff that fails outright, but there's a lot more review for like organization and using the right abstractions and just style stuff that, to make sure that teams of people all writing code in a similar way. So this is that horrible code in plain racket. And I'm going to switch the language to racket based warn. And this is a variant of racket that adds syntax warnings to the language. Various parts of the language will be annotated at compile time with syntax warnings through syntax properties. And that you can use to attach arbitrary metadata to bits of code. And a syntax warning is just a plain racket value. There's nothing terribly special about it. You make it a compile time in a macro or whatever, and it can have a message. It can have a piece of syntax saying where the fault is, and it can have a kind, which you can use for tooling purposes that you create with define warning kind. We'll talk about that a bit more later. And it can have a suggested fix. This is optional because not all warning, not all problems have clear solutions. But if a computer can figure out the appropriate way to arrange require imports, why should you have to? So once you have a syntax warning, you can attach it, attach it to a piece of syntax with the syntax warn procedure. And this just sticks it on using syntax properties. And given a syntax object, you can crawl through it and get all of the warnings that you want. Now, this is just the general API for warnings. Once the cool part is that we actually have a command we can use called RACO warn, where you can analyze a set of modules and it will display all the warnings for you. And you get some nice information, like what the actual name of it is, like the module that you're checking, the warning kind, the message, the actual syntax object. Getting that to print right was a pain, let me tell you. <laughs> And this is where the warning kinds start to show their use. For instance, if you have a giant series of languages that have all defined their own weird warnings, and you get some bizarre message you don't really get, you can use the warning kind to look up in the documentation and find more information, like a very detailed history of a particular class of warnings. Additionally, warnings can have a suggested fix, and that will show up in the command line output. Now, if you have a project with thousands of modules and you get hundreds of warnings that all have their own fixes automatically figured out for you, it would be kind of silly to make you have to fix them all by hand. So we also have 
a RACO fix tool. <laughs> and this will crawl a set of modules for any code that has a warning, that has a suggested fix, and resolve conflicts in case multiple fixes apply to the same piece of code. And using that, it will automatically change files according to the definitions of, in the warning. You can also use the dry run option in order to see what would change rather than just you know, throwing it at your entire code base and going, woo, let's see what happens. <laughs> now, there are options for checking entire packages, just like the test and cover commands you may be familiar with. So you can just drop this into your CI test suite to enforce warnings in a particular project. This is a snippet from the Travis CI configuration from one of my packages that I have been experimenting with, with for warnings. Now, what if a warning is wrong or not really helpful or you have serious style disagreements with the author and you want to argue with Matthias over it? Um, if we don't properly handle that case, we might end up in a familiar situation. <laughs> so clearly, you do not want syntax warnings reminding you of this little metal friend. And so we provide an option to configure which warnings should apply within a module. And we do this in the same way many other tools in the racket space do, by using submodules to define a configuration. And again, this is where the warning kinds show up. You can say, all warnings of this particular kind, we want to suppress them in this module. Future work includes doing that across an entire package or something like that. So what if I don't want to use the racket-based warn language? Well, warnings are just values you attach to syntax properties at compile time. You don't actually need hashlang racket-based warn to interact with them. So instead, if we have some library that wants to deprecate some procedure and replace it with a new one, there's no reason why the awesome library can't do that itself. It can wrap make thing in a macro that attaches the warning with the fix pointing to the new name itself. And without any interaction on the part of clients, they automatically get rack of warn and fixing just working. You don't have to actually opt into using lang racket based warn to get the tools working on your code base. Syntax warnings let packages gradually improve their client code bases. For instance, if you want to slowly deprecate features or point out little things and you come up with new style rules that you didn't think of before, you can just add warnings to them and anybody who depends on your package can magically get code improvements just show up. And wouldn't that be nice because it would mean I wouldn't have to work nearly as hard all the time. So there's a lot of future work in this space. It's a very big space. Um, automatic deprecation would be very nice <laughs> because syntax warnings are just values and you're just using macros to add them to things. So why not make a deprecate out macro that goes ahead and makes a warning for something that points to the new name automatically? There's no reason you can't do that. It's just Racket. <laughs> Props to Racket, everybody. <laughs> and there's some more complex tooling options I want to work on. For instance, automatically watching for changed files and just fixing them whenever you save. Or doing things like backing up files instead and just you know some standard command line stuff and better support for custom readers. This is a fun one, because syntax warnings currently now don't even work quite correctly when you have brackets instead of parens in the syntax. And that's a very fun problem to solve. In general, I'm thinking the solution will be something along the lines of having some sort of syntax property for customized printing, so that languages and readers and stuff that um, are adding custom read syntax can provide a hook that syntax warnings can dispatch to to control how they should represent the object as a string. That'll be fun. So I also want to add way more built-in warnings to racket-based warn because it really doesn't do much right now. It's pretty much a prototype. All it will do is yell at you in some cases about your require statements. So there's all sorts of things we can care about. 
For instance, proper white space. Oh, don't you love getting nitpicked over that one? <laughs> and if you are importing modules you're not using, or if you're defining variable, variables you're not using, because those happens all the time when you are editing code a lot and you forget to edit all of it. Or things like style guide rules. For instance, it is recommended in the racket style guide that you should use define where, uh, where appropriate instead of let. How many of, you knew, you, how many of you even knew there was a racket style guide? I see a couple hands, but if, you, if it was a syntax warning, you would all know about it. <laughs> So, and whatever else you want. I mean, this is just another racket language. If you want to go and throw up pull requests or tell me what I'm, what's wrong or what else we should do, it's just more racket code to write. It's not any super fancy tooling. It's not, I'm not parsing a bunch of stuff. It's just racket. And I also want to integrate more with the package system. There's a lot to do here. For instance, package-wide configuration, as I mentioned before and working with the catalog build system so you can automatically find out about, about warnings when your dependency packages change, or automatically fixing clients. For instance, if you release a new version of your package that has an extra warning with a fix, you should be able to say, hey, package catalog, clone all of my dependencies, fix everything in them, and send out pull requests. <laughs> Why not? <laughs> or using warnings for streamlined upgrades because you can set up a series of warnings where you establish an invariant such that you say, hey, if you go through each of these releases in turn and fix all the warnings at every step, you will have code that now magically works and won't break in the process. And you can do that to set up complicated behavior changes in procedures. For instance, if I want to change the behavior of a procedure, I can first rename it and then say, hey, you should use the new one then I can delete the old one, then I can introduce the new one with a new behavior, and then deprecate the renamed one to point to the new thing in certain circumstances where I can prove the behavior is correct. And now people can migrate forwards with automated tooling in safe and sane ways. And there are lots of interesting problems here that we run into. Um, suggested fix construction is very, very difficult. <laughs> Not even just from a, well, what do I really think the right thing to do here is kind of standpoint, but also just getting the source locations right is very tricky because you have to make sure that the source locations of interior values are consistent with the source locations of a surrounding value, especially if they're coming from different sources, which leads to the next problem. Macros can hide syntax warnings. If a macro produces code that produces a syntax warning, what do you do? It really depends. If this is something about white space or whatever, it probably doesn't matter. Who gives a damn if a macro is generating code with bad formatting? But if you're using some dangerous old unsafe feature that you really want to care about, those warnings you probably do want to know about. So is this something that we can solve in a general way, or does each macro need to know how to do this? I don't know. That's why I have this fancy open, pro open problem section. And how do you make warnings that can be configured with values? For instance, people have different line editor width standpoint um, views, the old 80 versus 100 something characters debate. <laughs> I'm sure you can find plenty of internet arguments about that one. Uh, so how should you specify this information in a way where expansion can pass it along to macros that are adding syntax warnings to things? And GUI integration. This is the big one. I'm sure you were all waiting for this. I do zero GUI integration at all. <laughs> yet, yet. <laughs> so, Dr. Racket integration, I have zero UX experience and do not want to be responsible for making something you all hate. <laughs> so, we might follow the Eclipse way and do yellow underlines. How does everyone feel about that? <laughs> That's why I haven't done that yet. <laughs> so I'm sure that will be an interesting problem to approach. Integrating with check syntax would be a very nice